Hello everyone! We had to wake up quite early in the morning, as you can see, because we are about to explore the first true pyramid, the Red Pyramid of Snefru in Dakshul. Let's go! It is still unknown why Snefru, after more than 10 years of his reign, moved the site of his burial at Meidung, where some of his family members had already been interred in Grand Mastabas, to Dakhshur. He abandoned already optimized step pyramids in favor of geometric pyramids. His first structure in Dakhshur was the Bend Pyramid which we have explored in the fourth episode. You can find the link below. The Red Pyramid was his last monument and is considered to be the earliest construction to have the perfect classical pyramidal form. Snefru's last structure actually bears two names, the North Pyramid, as it is located about 1800 meters north of the Band Pyramid, and the Red Pyramid, because of the deep reddish tint of its locally quarried limestone blocks. It is made of about 160 layers of stone. It is believed to be the burial location of Snefru. The pyramid was built between 2575 BC and 2551 BC. According to a German Egyptologist, Rainer Stadelmann, it took 17 years to construct it. But two other Egyptologists, Rolf Krauss, along with John Roma, suggest 10 to 11 years. Today, the pyramid is 105 meters high and 220 meters wide. Its base is second in size only to the Great Pyramid of Khufu and the third largest pyramid after the Great Pyramid and the Pyramid of Khafre. The slope angle measures 43 degrees, making the pyramid look stubby in comparison to other pyramids of similar scale. The slope angle is also equal to that of the upper part of the band pyramid. Snefru was the founding pharaoh of the Four Dynasty, and this period of time is known as the Age of the Pyramids. The Egyptian term Snefer can be translated as to make beautiful. Snefru stands out as one of the most magnificent builders in the history of mankind. We owe the image of the pyramids to his innovative approach. He was the first king for whom a true pyramid was constructed as a burial place. Among all the kings of Egypt, he accomplished the largest amount of architectural works, as he built three colossal pyramids and probably even nine lesser ones. 
It got him the title of the greatest builder of the Pyramid Age. In comparison with the Giza Plateau, the Necropolis in Dakshur is a restful place, letting us admire ancient structures in quiet contemplation. The pyramid still has a lot of debris at its base. It helps us imagine how the pyramids on the Giza Plateau must have looked about 100 years ago. The North Pyramid wasn't always red. Like other pyramids, it was cased with white Tura limestone. At the time of its completion it was called the Shining One and was the tallest man-made structure in the world. However, the casing stones were chipped off during the Middle Ages and used for construction projects in and around Cairo. Today some of the covering stones are to be found laying at the corner of the pyramid. Interestingly, some of the casing blocks found by the archaeologists have graffiti inscribed on their rare faces, either with Snefru's cartouche or with working crew names, such as the Green Gang or the Western Gang, in red paint. Actually, these are the only inscriptions identifying Snefru as the owner of the pyramid. At the eastern side of the pyramid, we can see the remnants of Snefru's mortuary temple. Although nothing much remains, it is significant, because it proves that Snefru was the first one to align the temple on the east-west axis to match the path of the sun. We can now see the oldest pyramidion, also called capstone. It is 100 cm high with a base of 157 cm. It was discovered among debris on the pyramid east side in 1982 by Reiner Stadelmann. It is made of fine white Tura limestone and as characteristic for the Four Dynasty, it is undecorated and uninscribed. It was found badly damaged and has now been reconstructed. It's quite a mystery as its angle of inclination is steeper than that of the Red Pyramid. There's a theory that it might have been planned for another pyramid, probably the Band Pyramid. These are the remnants of the original casing. But Snefru's accomplishments don't end with building pyramids. He conquered the Sinai Peninsula, which was crucial in terms of trade and manufacture. His expedition to Lebanon came back with 40 ships of cedar wood. He is also known for successful attacks against Libya, where he gained 11,000 captives and more than 13,000 head of cattle, and Nubia, with a booty of 7,000 captives and 200,000 head of cattle. The entrance to the pyramid is located on the northern side at a height of 28 meters. It leads to a 62 meters long descending passageway 
at an angle of 27 degrees down to the base of the pyramid. It is only 91 centimeters high and 1.23 meters wide. The passageway walls were constructed from single blocks matching the slope of the corridor. The pavement is laid under the wall blocks and is not placed in between them like in the bent pyramid. You can now clearly see that walking down this tiny and long passageway is quite demanding. Besides the burial chamber, the red pyramid contains two antechambers with identical dimensions. They are 8.36 meters long, 3.65 meters wide and 12.31 meters high. Their floors are on the same level as the base of the pyramid. We are now in the second antechamber. It's located exactly under the apex of the pyramid, which is quite unusual. In comparison with the Grand Gallery in Khufu's pyramid, the lower chambers are in perfect state of preservation. All chambers inside the Red Pyramid have corbelled ceilings with 11 to 14 layers. It's a masterpiece of design, as after thousands of years and more than million stones above, there are no structural issues or cracks. At 7.6 meters above the floor, there is an entrance to a 7 meters long corridor leading to the burial chamber. Upon entering the burial chamber, you can quickly realize why locals call it a bad pyramid. Believe me, even though you can't see them, you can smell them right away. The corbelled ceiling of the burial chamber rises to around 15 meters. The room measures 8.55 meters by 4.18 meters. However, the floor is bumpy and rocky. It's probably the work of robbers hoping to find treasure in the pharaoh's burial place. A 
As you can see, there is no sarcophagus, but in 1950 there were found ancient remains of a past middle-aged man, burying the signs of mummification. Two lower chambers have their long axis aligned north-south, but the burial chamber follows an east-west orientation. Please take a look at these huge monolithic blocks above the entrance in the first antechamber and at some of the recent graffitis on the walls. The official narration presents Nefru's two pyramids in Dakhshur as two consecutive designs. However, a Spanish astronomer Juan Antonio Belmonte and an Italian astrophysicist Giulio Magli argue that it was a unitary project. Their theory is based on a series of architectural, topographical, epigraphic and astronomical hints. This idea is quite appealing, taking into consideration the fact that the rulers of the first dynasty of Egypt also have two burial structures, one in Abydos and one in Saqqara. It symbolized their power over the north and the south. Maybe Snefru, instead of building two tombs in two different locations, decided to build one burial structure on the south, the Bent Pyramid, and one on the north, the Red Pyramid, in one location. Of the 11 pyramids that were originally built in Dakshur, only five remain today. The necropolis was abandoned by Khufu, who decided to build his tomb at the Giza Plateau. However, in the 12th and 13th dynasty, the kings, nobles and officials returned to Dakshur and erected wonderful burial structures. For example, the White Pyramid of Amenemhat II, the Black Pyramid of Amenemhat III and the Pyramid of Senosret III. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like, subscribe to my channel and leave the comment below. And see you on another ancient site!